Hi, my name is Laurencia Jackson, and I am a part of Team 3, along with Clay, Lainey, Bethany, and Madison. I will be going over the location and the rationale of the executive summary. So our company is Sodexo. Sodexo was founded in 1966 by Pierre Bellin in Marcel, France. Sodexo is a food service and facilities management multinational corporation, also known as MNC, that focuses on improving quality of life. Michael Landell became the CEO in 2005. Pierre Bellin still to this day maintains a position on the board of directors. Sodexo's headquarters is currently located outside of Paris, France, with branch offices in several countries around the world. Sodexo acquired their first food services contract with CEA, the French Institute for Atomic Energy, in 1966, and still partners with them today. In addition to providing food services for company cafeterias, Sodexo began partnership with the French Space Agency, schools, and the Olympics, and many others over the next 20 years. Sodexo also provides services in several areas of facility management, benefits and rewards, and personal and home services. The GMOA, also known as Global Market Opportunity Assessment, was completed to determine Sodexo's ability to be successful in this global market. Sodexo is already an international company and has been successful in many countries over the years. Recently, in August of 2019, Sodexo operates in 67 countries and serves 100 million consumers a day. Sodexo has done a very good job of applying their company philosophy to several industries through beneficial collaborations with foreign partners. All of this is in order to promote better quality of life. The location where we are trying to target is China, and China is located along the coast of Eastern Asia. China is the fourth largest country following behind Russia, Canada, and the United States. China is estimated to have a population of 1.3 billion, and the primary language spoken in China is Mandarin Chinese. However, that is not the only language that is spoken. They have several dialects that are also spoken. China is a leader in exports and imports and has one of the largest economies in the world. Sodexo has established a relationship with schools in China as a facilities management provider. They have updated HVAC systems in schools that they are partnered with in order to improve the air quality that has become compromised due to population. By offering additional services, Sodexo can strengthen the relationship with existing clients and expand within the country. I have finished my portion of the executive summary, and now I will turn over the video to Lainey Jerkins, who will cover the rest of the executive summary. Hi, my name is Lainey Jerkins, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the culture, economy, and the political and legal systems in China. <clears throat> so the culture... Um, describes how members of a society live and how we behave towards each other and with other groups. So culture is generally passed down from generation to generation and it derives from one's environment. So the people of China view themselves as a collectivist society. Um, so this is where individuals emphasize tradition, interdependence, and harmony. So um, these things in China actually come from their strong Confucian traditions. Um, so in fact, children are taught from a young age to value the Confucian traditions. The Chinese also focus on group memberships and societal connections, and they emphasize family and relationships. Uh, the families are very close-knit and have a strong dedication to honoring other family members. Um, some of the culture traits that we saw that were significant to Chinese culture um, include being harmonious, indirect, patient, flexible, and having mutually beneficial relationships. So the Chinese have a very restrained uh, society. So restrained societies typically avoid expressing personal opinions in order to maintain peace. 
so they rely heavily on compromising in order to maintain their harmonious relationships. The desire for harmony is actually an example of why they are also considered to be a high context culture. Um, high context cultures do not often say no, they prefer a more indirect approach um, in order to avoid that conflict. Um, if you're going to disagree or communicate something negative to them, you should do these in an indirect way so that you don't cause a conflict or disturb that peace. Um, if you're invited to a dinner, you should always arrive early, especially if you're a guest, because they arrange the seating based on the social hierarchy. Drunkenness at these events is also encouraged uh, because they believe that it forces the revealing of true intentions. <clears throat> so if you're invited to someone's home, you should bring a gift, uh, preferably from your own country if you're not from there. And then once you enter the home, never wear your shoes while you're walking inside. So just leave them by the door. The dress is very conservative and modest, especially for women. Um, in some places, they will not let you in if you're dressed immodestly. So it's best to just, you know, dress conservatively and not uh, reveal too much. So um, another aspect of doing business in China is to greet the most senior person in the room first um, and address them according to their formal title. So not just by their first name. So the economy in China has a mid to low country risk. Uh, one of the concerns that we see of doing business in China is the amount of government intervention. Um, they're known for making sudden changes, which can hurt the market and, you know, the companies doing business in China. Um, they tend to insert themselves in the market when firms aren't following their policies. Um, they have a few characteristics of a command economy, but for the most part, China operates as a market-oriented economy, so therefore this means that they have a mixed economy. So the political and legal systems in China, um, China used to be a totalitarian state, but now China is considered to have a socialist system. So China has a civil law system where the law is based on laws that have been codified. Uh, so in other words, the laws are clearly written and they're not left up to interpretation by the courts like common law is. Um, the laws and the political systems greatly influence if and when firms will enter the country and if they will continue doing business in these countries. China's government holds the most power and can ultimately determine if a business will be successful in the country due to their intervention when companies aren't following their policies. So the World Bank actually considers China to be 31st in the world in regards to ease of doing business. So this is one of the most attractive aspects for us planning on internationalizing into China. So we see that as long as we were to follow the um, laws placed by the Chinese government, that we would avoid the unwanted government interaction and therefore we would be successful in China.